Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be teaching all about inheritance and how it works in GameMaker. And to do so I've put together some uh, some diagrams as well as a really cool uh, example which you can download right in the description. To start off here we have this man. This man's name is Dave and Dave has two kids. One of which is Emma and the other one is Steve. Now because these are Dave's kids. There are certain things that they'd have that would be the exact same as Dave. For example, they'd have the same surname as Dave. They live perhaps in the same residence as Dave. Now, instead of duplicating those variables in both Steve and Emma, so Steve would have a surname variable and he'll also have an address variable, and the same with Emma and the same with Dave. Instead, what we can do is we can just set Steve and Emma, we can set them as children to a parent and then in that parent we can have the address and the surname of this family and then whenever we want Steve's surname or address it would just find Dave's surname and address and then return that it's the same with Emma so instead of having to duplicate um, those that, that piece of information three times we can just do it once and then tell these two children to get it from their father so when we draw a diagram about inheritance we have the parent at the top then we have all the children at the bottom, and they have an arrow going from the children to the parent, just like this. Steve and Emma both inherit from their parent, which in this case is Dave. So that's a sort of family scenario. That's where the whole parenting uh, inheritance and the children comes about. It's all very traditional. Now, if we go to another example of how GameMaker has this whole story and how you can use inheritance in your game, this is an enemy parent, right? It's an abstract sort of instance. We don't need to create it. It just has a whole lot of smaller enemies below it, children of this enemy parent, that are created. But this enemy parent right at the top has everything that those children have in common. So, for example, if you have a certain type of, of enemy that, say, has the same amount of health, then all you can do is you can um, create one of these enemy parents in your game give it that health variable and other things about perhaps how Foster runs and everything in common and then all you do is you create the different types of enemies that all have the same common um, things and then just tell them to set their parent to that of this enemy, this abstract enemy parent. So here we have the microbe, the monster, and the chicken, and perhaps in your game they all have the same health and they all run the same speed, but they just look slightly different. And perhaps they have their own little thing that they do that makes them unique. But in actual fact, deep down, they are all enemies and they have the same objective to chase the player and they, they all have health, perhaps the same amount. So all you do, like I said, is you create one um, object in your game called enemy parent or whatever, then you give this parent all the variables that are common to all three different types of enemies. So for example, the health or their speed or their objective. Then you create three objects, one micro, one monster, one chicken. And you set each one of those objects as uh, the child of this parent. And then in your game, you don't create the enemy parent. The enemy parent is just an abstract sort of object. Instead, you create um, your, as many microbes or monsters or chickens as you want and they will inherit all the variables from the parent and then they will operate as if they had those variables in their own uh, object themselves. So now let's jump to the example I've created right over here. See we've got four buttons, flasher, flipper, bobber and spinner. Now these buttons are all the same thing, they're all buttons. They need to be clicked, they perhaps need to animate, now knowing this, you could either in each of or well, each of them you could have the animation and all the code that handles the clickables and what it does. You can have that in each one of them, but that's a lot of repeated code. And if you're doing copy pasting, that's going to create some errors and you're going to have some trouble. Whereas with inheritance, you can create a master parent, an object button parent. You can give it all the common code that each one of these buttons needs. Then all you do is set each one of these buttons as a child of that parent and just like that it'll inherit or each button will independently inherit from their, uh, their father, their parent. So in this case, um, I've got a parent, see there, well I have no instance of this parent in the room at all, absolutely none. It's just in the background code and each of these buttons knows that they're getting a bit of code from that. So when I put my mouse over them, they're going to animate, not because in their code they have any sort of way to determine if they should animate, but because their parent is telling them, when the mouse is over you, you should do something. So here we have the flasher, see, mouse is over it, it flashes. There's no code in the flasher um, 
object to tell it when the mouse is over it, it should flash. It just says, um, if I can animate, this is what I need to do. So the parent tells the child, the mouse is over you, you are now allowed to animate, start flashing. And then the flipper, see, it just flips, just like that. The bobber, it does the good old bob. And the spin, this is going to spin as long as my mouse is over it. And then it stops spinning, spin faster, and uh, slow down, see? So none of these objects actually have the code to tell them when they should animate. They just say, they just have um, a variable that says, if I can animate, then I will. But they, yeah, they don't know when they should animate. So it's their parent that says, animate when the mouse is over you. So as long as they are inheriting from that parent, they will do some sort of animation when my mouse is over it. So let's jump right into the code of this one. So this is the project file for the inheritance uh, tutorial. In sprites here, we've just got all the buttons. We've got the flasher, we've got the spinner, the flipper, the bobber. Uh, one of these has an alternate um, sub-image. Here we go, it's flasher, because that flashes when the mouse is on it. The other ones, that they don't, they don't need one. Then we've got sprites title that just says, uh, well, for buttons inherit, blah, 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 blah. Then I've got a font that just states when the button's been clicked, it says what kind of button's been clicked. Then here in the object, we've got object button, we've got object spinner, bobber, flipper, we've got the message that pops up when we click it, and we've got the title at the top. Now if we go into object button flasher, and we look in the step event, right in here, we'll notice it says, if animate equals true, I'm going to do stuff, otherwise don't do stuff. Now, as it is now, there is no create event. So if I had to run this program, it's going to get to this line and say, you know, what is animate? We don't know what the value of animate is right now, so... I don't know what to do. Should I do image speed? Should I not? There's nothing that's telling us, so it's going to come up with an error. So what we're going to have here instead is we're going to have an object button parent, and that parent is going to have that animate variable for the children, which is spinner, bobber, flipper, and flasher. And then um, that parent's going to say, well, if the mouse is on, you know, if position meeting a, a mouse x, mouse y, or self, you know, and self, then it's going to animate, and then it's going to pass that back to the children. And then when the children run this part of code, they're going to already know what the value of the, this animate boolean is, and then it's going to do stuff. Now also notice this, event inherited. Now basically, when you have a parent that has a certain event, if the child doesn't have that same event, so if the parent has a create and these children didn't have a create, then it would always do the create event of the parent. But for instance, if the parent had a step event and the child had a step event, then automatically this step event of the child overrides the step event of the parent. So as long as GameMaker sees that the child has a step event, it'll never do the step event of the parent. You have to explicitly tell GameMaker to do the step event of the parent first and then do the step event of the child. Because remember, in this example, the object button parent is going to tell these uh, children when, it, when they can animate. And it's going to be doing that in a step event also. So you notice that all of these have a step event. See, so they each of them have to inherit that first step event from their parent before doing their own one, and that's what you do when you call event inherited. So basically, when it gets to the step event of this child, it's going to get to number one, uh, line one. Then it's going to get to the event inherited. Then it's going to jump out of here. It's going to jump into the step event of the parent. Do the step event of the parent's code. Then it's going to come back to here and do this, right? So in this piece, in this line one, that's where it gets what the variable of animators and all that stuff, and then it jumps back here and does the rest. So let's jump right into that object parent. We're going to call it object button parent, right over there. It's going to have no sprite. Remember, it's an abstract item. It doesn't ever get created in the game rooms. And then I'm just going to push that to the top, click OK, and then it's got its name, go back in. It's going to have a create, and it's going to have a step. So in the create, I'm going to have two variables. Uh, one is can click equals true. This is one of those things we can set to false whenever we don't want the button to be clicked. And then here it's going to have animate equals false. Right? We don't want any of the buttons that inherit from this parent to animate until the mouse is over them. So once that's done, we go into the step event, grab some code. Here we're going to say if position meeting. See if we can finish this off. There we go. Then here we can have the x and y variables of the default cursor. And we have self. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, how can you have self there because the parent is never created? Remember, when a child inherits from a parent, it is getting all the code from the parent as if it was in its own uh, object over here. So when a child reads the self thing, it's thinking of itself. It's not thinking of the parent in any way. 
see here we say we say here we have animate equals true or otherwise animate is false just like that okay so that is the, the parent it's very simple things that are common to all these objects are the animate so the parent handles the animate and I don't have to copy these pieces of code into every one of the uh, buttons so once that's done we're gonna go into every one of these buttons that all have this animate in common we're gonna go to parent click this object button parent bam do this four times just like that button parent button parent just like that so now they inherit all the events and all the code from the parent now you see this uh, object button parent has a create event whereas some of these don't for example the flasher now because as I said before flasher doesn't have a create event you don't need to do this event inherited because it will automatically get the create from the parent whereas because they both have step events in our child we have to call the event inherited once it gets to this line it'll jump out of the step event go into the step event of the parent right in here then it'll say if position meeting blah 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 and remember self as soon as it gets to the self remember it's already running this piece of code as if it was in the child it'll set animate to true and then once animates true it's going to carry on jumping back to the child and then it's going to carry on here animate equals true okay well image speed equals 0.2 and blah 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 now notice that in our parent I don't have any of these other things I don't have image speed equals whatever and uh, you notice that in the spinner there's a create here it has its own spin speed it has its own you know they have each one of them has variables that are um, unique to themselves as well as having the common variables so the parent will just hold everything common which is the animate uh, function right there um, right yeah that's all good let's check again yeah and then if we go into spinner I think see because spinner has the create as well as the parent it will have to call event inherited that is a very very big thing always remember if you want to first get the event of the parent and then do the event of the child call event inherited if you just want to do the event of the child don't call it and then it'll just override it and then um, in that way the uh, child will have its own sort of way of doing things and it doesn't have to take things from the parent but the parent is always there just in case so that wraps all of that up we've got all those buttons they're ready in the room we've got the title we've got the message that pops up and um, when we click each one of them it just creates an instance of object message and object message has a message and that pops up in text the same text that we find here in the font right over there so now, I'm going to click play and we'll see it'll do exactly the same as the things we saw in the preview. Open this up. There we go. There we go. So, all four buttons inherit the animate variable from their parent. Note that one does not need to create an instance of the parent itself. Think of the parent as an abstract object. I can't stress this enough. It is best to use inheritance and you, you know, you have, you set up the parent as an abstract object. It's never created but it's there in the back of the mind of the code and the code knows that if it's inheriting from that parent it's as if it had all the code from the parent as well as its own so yeah, that flashes that flips that bobs that spins and if you click it it's going to say spinner flasher flipper bobber just like that see so yeah, that is inheritance in a nutshell I mean I'm sure it gets a lot more complicating but right now you know, this is all you really need to know so if you're going to create a few monsters in your room and perhaps the player has to run away from these monsters and if those monsters all have the same objective of attacking the player or if they all have the same health or I don't know some sort of attribute that is all common you can create a parent and you can tell your little monsters to inherit from that parent and then you don't have to copy that and copy and paste the same code over and over and over again and if you want to use the um, events from the parent as well as the child then don't forget to call um, event inherited from you know whichever whichever event you want to inherit from the parent as well as the child so that wraps up this whole thing i hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful please feel free as always to comment rate and subscribe for more there will be a link in the description where you can find the project file also feel free to like my facebook page and if you are feeling generous you can buy me a beer or a coffee two of the things that keeps a student going throughout any sort of time frame so thank you very much for watching um, you can find all the links in the description go crazy and I'll see you guys next time for another great gaming tutorial. Cheers for now.